Hi everyone, as Alex has already mentioned, my Capstone uh, project is a RSI-based local positioning system. My name is Astrid and my supervisor is Raj Makarian. Uh, a bit about the plan, what I'll be talking about. Uh, I'll be introducing a bit about local positioning systems, what different kinds there are and what are the main uh, positioning techniques used. And I'll present, proceed to present my project and what we have changed and what uh, solutions are suggested. Um, two main positioning systems are global positioning system and local positioning system. What are the main differences? Global positioning system provides worldwide coverage, while local positioning systems provide coverage for limited area. Uh, and it utilizes short range signal signaling uh, nodes in comparison to global positioning system which uses satellites. A bit uh, comparison, global uh, positioning system provides worldwide coverage, while uh, local positioning system is not. It offers uh, coverage for a limited area. The accuracy for global positioning uh, GPS is 5 meters and is the most integrated and used system and is very easy to use uh, with most available um, devices. However, there are dis disadvantages for GPS. Uh, main ones are those are minimally efficient in indoor areas, in buildings, and minimally efficient underground or subsurface areas. Uh, and it's very sensitive to spoofing or jamming, which can raise security risks. On the other hand, uh, local positioning systems enable you to alternate their precision, get higher precision if you need, uh, to reduce the precision if you need less uh, power consumption or some other um, needs for the specific system. Uh, and may outperform the GPS when it's denied, for example, in indoor environment or underground areas. Um, so moving forward, there are most used techniques are time of arrival method, which uses, which GPS, uh, this method uses, um, is used by GPS. It measures the distance between the nodes and signal, node and target, uh, and correlates the time uh, it took to travel from the target to node to the distance. However, there is another method, uh, received signal indicator based, which measures, which measures the received signal strength and correlates the signal strength to distance. Uh, Time of arrival method is generally more accurate than RSSI-based positioning. However, this method requires more synchronization as in, and is more complex and can uh, perform worse than RSSI-based positioning systems in non-line-of-sight environments. What was the goal of the project? Implement a positioning system that will be, opera will be able to operate both in line-of-sight and non-line-of-sight environments. Uh, and uh, we don't want to compete with GPS. We want to create a system that will be able to provide you positioning information when GPS is denied. Overview of the system. Uh, so we utilized software-defined radio modules, Adam Buto modules. Uh, the implementation is based on that. We use RSSI technique um, and the system can operate bon both in, in line of sight and non-line of sight environments. What is Adam Puto module? It is a software defined radio which allows you to um, change, uh, alternate and adapt settings and signal um, properties based on your needs. It's developed by analog uh, devices and a very compact and cost effective software defined radio in the market and has accessible platform for use and easy to integrate and easy to use. Uh, and has integrated FPGA for uh, complex computational um, things. Uh, what does scope include? We wanted to create a system that could be integrated in different platforms, for example, automated vehicles, uh, drone navigation, or indoor localization systems. However, we mainly focused on improving the distance measurements. So when uh, using positioning systems, most positioning systems measure the distance and improve the positioning strategies or techniques used. However, we wanted to focus not on the positioning techniques, but on the distance measurement techniques. Uh, and we wanted to provide key operational modes for obtaining positional information. However, 
external housing and uh, mounting specifications are excluded from the project and should be included when uh, integrating in another system, for example, in an automatic car. Yes. So what factors affect received signal strength? Most of the most important one is modulation techniques. We wanted to have a simple technique that could be used in various environments, in noisy environments, in stable environments. Um, and we wanted, as the receive signal strength highly depends on the amplitude of the signal, we wanted to have a modulation technique that uses uh, minimal amplitude changes, which left us with uh, phase shift king and frequency shift king. Phase shift king changes the phase to uh, deliver the message, deliver the mm, digital message, and frequency shift king changes the frequencies. So we tested with FSK and QPSK, and FSK, uh, FSK modulation um, performed much better than QPSK in long ranges. So it required less calibration. We could calibrate it for 10 meters and use for 15 meters or calibrate for 5 meters and use at 10. However, the QPSK modulation was not um, as much uh, adaptable and we needed to recalibrate, re recalibrate the modulation technique each time the distance changed. So we focused on uh, frequency shift king and proceeded with that. Uh, the operational frequency was another key thing to, cha uh, to choose uh, to minimize the propagation losses and uh, free space path loss. Uh, and as we wanted to operate on uh, place operate in places where GPS was denied, we wanted to operate on lower uh, frequencies. So when, for example, GPS is is jammed, we are not in the same frequency ba band to be jammed as well. Also, we as uh, for this stage, we wanted to operate freely. So the industrial, scientific, and medical uh, bands for operation, for free operation and license free operation are uh, most, mm, a few of them are 433 megahertz, 826 megahertz. So as we wanted to operate on lower frequencies, we chose uh, 433 megahertz. A bit uh, about antenna characteristics, as we didn't focus much on antennas, as we didn't want to increase the range, but we wanted to increase the distance measurement techniques. Uh, the antennas we used were omnidirectional and uh, were placed parallel to each other, both on the transmitter and the receiver. How RSSI and distance are correlated? So we measured the distance, we, we measured the RSSI at a certain distance and take that as a reference. And as we move forward and make much more measurements, we can calibrate, recalibrate the system to have a better uh, approximation uh, for the distances. So we have one of the most important things is path loss exponent, uh, which changes in different environments, in different scenarios. So recalibration and uh, recalculation for path loss exponent is very important. So what we did with was we put, for example, at 1 meters, 2 meters, 3 meters, and 4 meters. And at each distance, we measured that and it calculate the path loss exponent to achieve better results. What we got, this is raw RSSI data. Uh, please note that on the plots, the data RSSI data is positive. However, the, this is for a simple uh, visualization. However, the actual RSSI distances are measured in our negative values, uh, negative dBm values. Um, as seen is this both uh, measurements were done in stable environments and optimal conditions where n not, not much noise was present. And as we can see, the measurement differences are not that high and the measurements don't vary that much. Still, we needed RSSI filtering techniques um, to reduce the noise and variability and we wanted, as we wanted to operate in distinct environments and different environments. We considered uh, four filters, moving median, Kalman filter, Gaussian, and also trimmed mean, alpha trimmed mean filter. However, we focused on Kalman filter. I'll show you why. So the blue line is raw data. Uh, orange one is Kalman filter. Purple one, purple one is alpha trimmed mean. And the yellow one is moving median filter. So alpha trimmed mean and moving median filter were able to reduce the noise and were very much sta stabilizing the system where there were not much noises. However, in this kind of systems, we can see where when the noise was present, 
they were not so robust and were changing with the uh, system which decreased the reliability. However, the Kalman filter is much more reliable and doesn't, isn't affected that much by noises. Again, here it can be seen the same, pa same pattern, uh, so we chose Kalman filter. What experimental results we got? Uh, we experimented on uh, 0 to 13 meters. Uh, the operational range was that much, uh, which can be improved by um, antenna changes and hardware changes. Uh, a bit data. It shifted, sorry. Uh, the minimum error we got was absolute error. We got was point, point, point zero four meaning in uh, four, meter, four meters we had four centimeters uh, offset and which is uh, approximately one percent off however the highest uh, error we got was at eight meters which is considered to be a longer range in this case scenario and at that point we had 90 centimeters of offset how we uh, calculated the position, we use trilateration uh, methods, which means we have not three nodes here, <coughs> one here, here, and here. The target here the calculates the distances, and as the sphere mm, circles intersect at one point, we calculate the positions, uh, position of the mm, target depending on that. However, that was ideal case. We didn't have ideal case, so most of the time as uh, the measurements are not ideal, the circles don't intersect at one point, so we have to take uh, the measurements as we have, take the intersection points and calculate their, mm, the mean of this triangle. So here we have this triangle with the target inside the area and this triangle inside the area. This is what, how was we calculate the intersection point uh, of two circles. And it was important to decide which intersection point, as two circles intersect at two points, it was important to decide what point was best to choose. So traditional method offered um, a technique to take the tr uh, intersection point that is closest to the third circle center. However, in, for example, in this scenario, as the RSSI-based uh, positioning follows Gaussian uh, distribution, um, distribution, it is most, most likely to be near the other intersection points, near the end of the point. So the traditional method suggested that the uh, target would be in this area. However, we, use, we used another method uh, which suggested to take not the one that is closer to the third circle center, to take the one that is closest to um, the bound of the third circle, which highly improved the uh, accuracy. Uh, what we utilized to uh, implement the node target signal transmission, we had time div division multiple access, which means at, time, at distinct times, distinct nodes send their signals, and uh, the target was ready to receive them. There was another option to uh, operate on frequency division uh, multiple access uh, with that method. However, that was m much more complex and would be not that um, efficient and noisy environments. And with each uh, message, the ta ta node sends unique ID and the target receives, uh, verifies that the received signal is from certain node and then uh, takes the measurements. Uh, we did a few experiments with uh, nodes, so here are the nodes, and here is the target location. The mean error for this one was 0.4 meters, however that can be uh, also very much optimized with uh, additional um, trilateration techniques. And we also did an estimation at non-line of sight environments, so this target was behind a wall, um, and it's worth noting that we calibrated the system when the node was behind the wall, so did we didn't change the environment after calibration. And for this, uh, the mean error was higher, um, 0.6. So what in future we need to Im improve? We need nodes to operate as a standalone devices, as now the nodes and target uh, require PC or as, uh, at least Raspberry Pi to operate. Um, 
and we need precise synchronization between the nodes to increase the reliability of the system and be able to operate in dynamic environments. Uh, the system was most optimal in static environments, in dynamic environments as the time taken to measure the distance and um, do uh, localization was five seconds. It was not for dynamic environments. So uh, we wanted to, with the localization, we wanted to show that improved distance measurements, improved the uh, localization, and our method was, f was feasible. Uh, yes, and my sincere thanks to my supervisor, Raj Magarian, who supported me through all this process, to my friends, uh, and colleagues and parents, everyone who supported me, as their unwavering support meant a lot and their motivation they gave me meant a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Astrid. We will be taking questions from the committee. Uh, yes, I uh, was very good. Um, I have a question. Um, you have measurements you actually measured. Did you have an experimental setup or was this whole thing a math lab type no. of? We had an um, experiment uh, set up. So for these measurements, when distances were um, was measured, we had two uh, adult Pluto modules set up at different uh, meters, distances, and we measured the distance. So we had a GUI to support that. Okay. Any pictures? This was the GUI. Any pictures of the setup? A uh, sad story. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this morning that I have no pictures. No, I have pictures, but not the ones that I cr pre present here. But yeah, because we were uh, measuring the distances at different places, so once uh, we stayed under the rain and didn't have time to take a picture, and once we were at a uh, IG, I'm sorry, uh, the park, and there were many people, so we don't, didn't want to take pictures with uh, those many people. But we did, uh, the experimental setup was uh, implemented in real life. So you use the same module for the nodes and also yes. for the uh, for the object. Target. You are yes. For target. Okay. Uh, one more question. In the end, you mentioned that it's not for dynamic uh, setups. Uh, it's not binary, right? It's not static and dynamic. In some cases, when the when the environment changes very slowly, yes, it can uh, still be used. You it can be used. I meant uh, like static as the moving objects. If the m object is moving and is moving very slowly, the system will be able to still um, localize it. However, it is, for example, for drones, it will not be able at this stage because the system is not optimized for that use. How do you foresee this being used for drones? Like what? It's, it's how do you foresee this being used for drones? It seems like it for very short distances. Uh, it's n so the main idea was we didn't focus on inc uh, increasing the ranges. We focused on, for example, we have this much range. We want to increase the distance as much as we can. So for example, if we change the antennas, because these antennas were not for high range uh, operational settings, if we change the antennas and choose optimal ones to operate, for example, at uh, 100 meters or more, the system will still be able to operate in that uh, conditions. So our main focus on main idea was to increase the distance measurement technique. Okay, but any applications you think like like drones are used for something, right? If you are saying hundred meters, yes. Which which applications uh, are mostly indoor uh, localization and autonomous vehicles, small autonomous vehicles like Yerkes project, where not much range is needed for uh, movement. Uh, ju just a, a small comment. I've seen yes. a similar. Uh, Actually, in my company, we went at some point tried using uh, RFIDs and the signal for mm -hmm. localization, or at least detecting in which volume the object is. Yeah. But I, I've seen a lot of research, and a lot of people try to do indoors the, the RFIDs. And if you, especially, let's say the warehouses, right? There's a lot of metal there. And yes, it does not really work well. So we also had that issue when we uh, when I tried to e experiment at home and uh, we had a lot of metallic objects in, uh, around it the measurements were affected so what we suggest is to put the these systems these um, nodes or targets above at a certain point that uh, for example these things don't reach near the ceiling so if uh, in those conditions it will work better so we had that issue as well one of the there were measurements that were done um, 
in those conditions, this, this measurement was done uh, near metallic objects and this the, at 10, me 10 meters. So we also had that issue, but what we suggest is to um, put at high places and, for example, near the ceilings. So, yeah. so the operational domain is really, as, as you have some requirements for it. It's yes. It can be used there. Yes. Yeah, thank at you. this point for this prototype, yes. Okay, thank you. Well, from a project, I understand it needs a lot of calibrating yes. within the environment. Have you uh, assessed the impact of the um, signal uh, strength change at the source? So if your transmitter changes its signal strength due to ver various conditions, say for example, uh, power voltage. Have you uh, done that analysis at all? Or uh, not? We consider at the beginning, we considered the system to uh, remain static during the operations. So we considered, assumed that uh, the nodes, as we set up the nodes, we assumed that nodes won't change the uh, amplitude, for example, or uh, signal strength at the beginning. Okay. Thank you.